Hola, Filterinos, and welcome to the Pop Filter Podcast, the progenitor of the superhero show show, nay, our, our movie of the year, Netflix, the OCD, and doing bits. This is the only podcast conglomerate with the science and the screaming to determine what the greatest pieces of pop culture have been for this entity's existence. While movie of the year is currently covering 1975 and the superhero show show is digging into the comic book based shows out currently and these bonus shows will be celebrating 10 years of your pop filter by figuring out the best albums, TV comedies, TV dramas and movies from 2011 to 2020. Tonight we're focused on the TV comedies of those 10 years and I'm your host and co-founder Mike Gravano. Breathe. Yeah! Oh, thank you. I was mostly just stopping so I could get Aaron. Uh, with me for over a decade is one Rye A N. Yeah! Woo! Uh, I, yeah, I thought I thought it was ten years, but as we learned on the last anniversary shows, eleven year anniversary. Eleven year anniversary. The most important. Sometimes somebody on the board's bad at math. Okay. I think that gift is fart. It's the fart anniversary. The fart anniversary. Art made a fart. What would you? What, what? What? What would you give me? Well, I think that what fart art would you give me? Ultimately, I think the thing you do is you fart in a bag and you hand it to somebody. <laughs> they yeah. open it thinking it'll be a real gift. It's just a fart. They open the Ziploc <laughs> bag hoping that the clear see-through <laughs> Ziploc bag is a real gift, <laughs> and it turns out to just be a fart. Oh, this is just fart smells. He's son of a bitch. But I've also studied, like you know, I minored in uh, farting on cakes. You could put a real fucking dent in some frosting if you do it right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What a weird porn trend that was. That definitely <laughs> happened during our run of your pop filter, so we're allowed to talk about it right now. Isn't that the bracket tonight? <laughs> yeah. Porn trends. Yeah. Comedies. It's what makes you laugh. For me, hot chicks <laughs> farting on cakes. I'll never not giggle at that. What did this decade of comedy do for you, Ryan? How would you define it? Uh, I mean, this is the decade. The last decade was the one where uh, dramas became a little funny, so comedies uh, well, no longer what? had a need for laughter. This is our like uh, our biopic decade where uh-huh. it was going to be you know you were going to as a comedian back in the day whether you were Jerry Seinfeld or other hilarious luminaries like uh, Jim Belushi from the show According to Jim the uh, guy who did you, Boston Common you will just get a sitcom <laughs> and now it's like a twenty two minute ten short films about how your life is weird. Yeah, your life's a little weird, and now they can show the darker instead of just like because dating is hard. But yeah, I that, wonder if how much laugh count will move hmm. things through the bracket. Or if it's just like, you know what, this is just too good and we can't, you know, like it's not about how funny you were anymore. It's right. just that you were Undeniable. very smart and you happen to be 30 minutes, so we're going to call you a comedy. Uh, as much as we would like it, we cannot do this bracket alone. With us are uh, Pop Filter regulars, Pop Filter guests, Pop Filter uh, legacies. I was going to say has been. What's the nice has been? Legacy. I think Luminaries. Luminaries and leg- legacies. Uh, and you know what? I'm going to introduce one of them right now. It's it's co-host of Movie of the Year. It's Birthday Boy Greg. Hey! It's my birthday, everybody. I didn't want to bring it up, but <laughs> it is. Uh, uh, everyone is aware of it, and I think we're all celebrating in our own way. Yeah, you told us we have to. Well, yeah. yeah. I said everybody, ha- I said everybody ha- can celebrate in their own way, but everyone must celebrate mm-hmm. in their own way do it do it however you want but you're gonna celebrate uh i'm i'm going to order a big steak dinner go to a strip club and make some mistakes in honor of <laughs> young greg <laughs> well thank you mike <laughs> greg Honest, honestly in the in the current climate just going to a strip club is probably a mistake so <laughs> you're most of the way there what is the, the decade of comedy to you well the things you were talking about the the like little mini movies um In a lot of the comedies, you don't even exactly understand what's going on all the time because you just see such little snippets of people's lives and you sort of have to infer what's going on Mm -hmm. the rest of the time. But I would also say that comedy made a little bit of a return to the feel good, a little bit of a return to the warm and and cuddly as a function of the comedy because they got pretty nihilistic uh, for a while. And I think that we have some today that we're going to be talking about that are a little bit more uh, life-affirming. Warm. Well, I think that uh, a shocking hit like that we didn't think would be very big among the pop filter uh, studios was Superstore. And yeah. uh, almost taking down the bracket last year for 2020 was Ted Lasso. And these are uh, positivity, and it doesn't feel like a fucking 
we have to sit in on all these comedians' therapy sessions every time right. we watch an episode. So no, it's just delightful. I, I don't know if we're ever going to return to the time where sitcom, like three camera sitcoms, reign supreme. But if we could do a little bit less analyzing of your fucking brains and what you think we need. To, and that's the thing, too, is that they're telling us what they think we should know about their brains. Right. So it's open, but it, how open is it? With us also is the host of the Superhero Show Show. Let's see if she can rein her ego in check because she's not hosting this goddamn show tonight is Cassie. Hey, what's up, Mike? Um, I, I simply will not rein in my ego. Absolutely not. You will not get that. Um, classic Cassie. <laughs> classic. But uh, thank you for bringing it on, even though it does bring some competition to your hosting. I appreciate it. Doesn't, it doesn't. I feel fine. I'm not threatened at all. Mm-hmm. Do you want to ask me about what I thought about comedies? No, I want you to, I want you to talk as little as possible. Uh, you underhost, you right. underhosting wet bitch. <laughs> Cassie, well, <laughs> what do you think about this decade of comedy? Mike, thank you for asking. And if I could say one word, I'd say they're good, man. They're good in oh, these last shit. 10 years. That's what really separated this last 10 years. These 10 they years, they good. got good. Uh, but I would say, like, it is, it's this weird mix of, like, being able to tell a joke that doesn't rely on, like, a, just one shitty punchline. It's mm -hmm. no, no laugh tracks. There's, like, thought put into more of these shows where we get, like, full stories going on. So uh, it's, like, a, where we do get some that are, like, dramas, but then also, like, they all have arcs and you follow each mm -hmm. individual character. So it's more, it's more storytelling. Yeah, as far laughs. as the shows that we watch... The only laugh tracks that we hear are like, you are making a commentary on the fact that shows used to have laugh tracks. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise we, that's sort of gone. It feels as old as black and white television to have laugh tracks in your show. And seeing it mocked so many times or like uh, parodied so mm -hmm. many times to make it seem creepy or weird. It now mm -hmm. in regular comedies, it still does seem creepy <laughs> yeah. or weird. Yeah. Especially when you realize most of those people are dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All the way from the unnatural 20s is regular guest on our big shows, Caitlin. Hey, what up, everyone? Yeah. Um, I'm here to laugh and give some gigs and talk about give them some good gigs? comedies. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna do a gig right now. <laughs> like, and Caitlin, I'm like, going to deliver a dinner yeah. or... Um, yeah, it's my birthday, apparently, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, happy birthday, Caitlin. Yeah. How, how, how's the last 10 years of comedies? How do you define it? We've heard nihilistic. We've heard better storytelling. But I want to know what the sick, twisted mind of Caitlin McDougal thinks. I think it really, uh, if, when I reflect, I think of a lot of hee-hees and ha-ha-has. And they <laughs> did hit me deep in my belly. And that's what I think of when I think of the past 10 years of All right. TV comedy. <laughs> Thank it's like you, hanging Caitlin. out with an issue of Reader's Digest. <laughs> It'll oh, he he did. and ha ha till the cows come home. Uh, you did what what the t past ten years of TV comedy did to me. Yeah, we ha ha. No, 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 we ha ha. Uh, <laughs> former host of Superhero Hour Hour. Former host of Hat News. Current host of I'm gonna drink these root beers and tell you what they taste like. Taylor Wilhite. What up, guys? The Trash Goblin's back from the trash heap, <laughs> ready to eat your garbage and suck some shit. Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. Taylor, I, how, I forgot, how I forgot you what the energy I'm supposed to bring to these. <laughs> no, no, no. I that. You always brought that. You were always the Trash Goblin. I'm glad yeah. you remembered that catchphrase. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, so what a comedy means. What does comedy mean to me? Uh, Webster's Dictionary defines comedy. As in the past 10 years, whatever <laughs> wasn't the Big Bang Theory. It, uh, <laughs> solidly, like the last decade was all just like, okay, we realize that that's really big, and but a lot of people hate it. How do we be not that? And the answer How is Young Sheldon. <laughs> <laughs> the furthest thing away from Big Bang Theory you is know what, Young Sheldon. Yeah, you know what comedy young Big Bang Theory. Uh, young Sheldon. You know what comedy means to me is finding out that every comedian that you love now had spent at least six, probably 12 episodes on the Big Bang Theory. Oh. oh yeah. you, have to, you have to go get that money. And then you can go do other stuff. Go do your arty dumb thing. I thought you were going to say uh, every comedian you know and love you found out spent six to 12 months uh, horribly being a sex pest. And then it's come out now and you're uncomfortable liking it. We'll get into a few of that throughout Ima the time. Imagine, I was say. imagine it was just six to 12 months. <laughs> yeah. And by six to 12 you months. Know? I had I had a phase. We were doing an internship. What kind of <laughs> utopian vision is that? I did a sex pest residency. <laughs> Unpaid. Uh, thanks, America. 
we are going to take the quickest of breaks, and then when we come back, we're going to dive in to the battles to determine the TV comedy of 2011 to 2020. Hey, guys, thank you so much for listening so far. And let me just tell you that everything ahead of this commercial is much better than what came before it. That's my guarantee. While I have you here, let me tell you about a website. It's called yourpopfilter.com, and it's everything you need that's related to pop filter. Everything Mike, everything Ryan, everything Greg, everything Cassie, everything is there at yourpopfilter.com. While you're there, go to yourpopfilter.com slash Amazon. Make that your new Amazon bookmark and do your shopping from there. That way we get a little piece of the action and Amazon doesn't. Make sure you're also listening to everything that Pop Filter has to offer, which includes the Superhero Show Show, a podcast that covers every single TV show that's based on a comic book or comic book property, and Movie of the Year, where we sit down and try and figure out what is the single greatest movie of any given year. That's Superhero Show Show, that's Movie of the Year, and that's yourpopfilter.com. Rate, subscribe, review, bye! Round one, battle one. It is the originator of this era of the aforementioned I'm One Lone Comedian. Here's how my brain works. 2011's TV comedy of the year, Louie. For some reason, we haven't talked much about this show or its creator in a bit. And it's going up against a friend of the show's Tompkins pick of what should be on the bracket, Veep, a show that had to leave the air because real politics got too absurd that the show said, we can no longer make jokes, you're doing it for us, we're out. Taylor. Yeah. What do you think more owns the comedy of the last 10 years? Louie, which uh, got booze from the crowd, yeah. or Veep? Here's the thing. I think if you would removed from any other context other than the work itself, I feel like you, people would say Louis had more of an impact and was a bigger mm-hmm. deal. Uh, also, I don't I don't know that many people who saw Veep, but everyone who I did know who saw Veep absolutely loved it. It was sort Veep of Veep is fucking amazing. Yeah, Veep Veep was the lesser known sort of lighter watched but consistently great and like probably in like five years everyone will look back and be like oh this was actually the greatest show on uh so you know impossible to say there's no other (laughs) there's no nothing else to involve in that decision whatsoever ryan we we had a long talk about whether louis should be brought up at all and we decided it would be uh a lie and a historical to not mention its importance at all. I agree. I do like. I would say that like it's like I love Lucy, The Simpsons, and Louie as far as most influential shows of all time as far as comedies go. Like it really did change the game forever. It has to be talked about. If it loses right now, I couldn't think of a better thing for it to lose to. Yeah, it, it's. I, I love. I thought you uh, said random. I was. It was my turn. But uh, go ahead. I, th- I thought we were having a discussion. I'm sorry, but know that everybody but you got a point in this room. Continue. <laughs> Hooray. Uh, go ahead, Mike. Uh, but I'm going to uh, take a point away from you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cassie, you want to host? Yeah, I'm on this one. No, I don't want this. You could take this, Mike. <laughs> I, I was saying that, that, that I love the randomness of when we build the brackets and these two going up against each other. It does. It's uh, just as acerbic as Louis, but also it cares more about different people. There's different viewpoints throughout, even if towards the end they all kind of sounded like the creator, and even I though s- after he left. I could see the issues of like, well, uh, real life got so crazy that we can't, we don't, but it wasn't actually satirizing that much realistic shit. It was just these people in a room being as like trying to top who was more awful than the other one uh, is what made it the funniest show on TV. It got Julia Louis-Dreyfus into the Hall of Fame, Pop Filter Hall of Fame, because we weren't sure that Elaine was good enough. Apparently. It was her Dreyfossessance. I her fought dr- for the old tales of New Christine, but you guys said, no, the Dreyfossessance really started with Veep. Um, I, I just, let's, I, let's just, let's just say that Louis changed the game and then, uh, he became a disgusting, or he always was a disgusting person. Then we found out about it and then we look back at some of the episodes. Yeah. And like, there's, uh, one well, you were where saying he, it. <laughs> he just, he just pins a girl to the wall and says, what? No, this isn't rape. Like, if you go back and watch it again, you yeah. will see all of the clues that should have uh, Scooby Dooed us right to the final message. So much of it is about his lack of control, and it, especially his lack of like sexual 
control. And so it's not just that retroactively now we know he's bad and so we don't like it anymore. You like see the seeds of what really seemed to be like him allowing for his own behavior to be captured in the show. And it's just, that's the opposite of comedy. That's like such a downer. And in addition, like exactly what you said, the opposite of comedy, like fully 50% of the episodes of that show were not really funny. They were just sort of a confessional. Here's what I like. I distinctly remember the episode about like him not wanting to talk to his dad, which is like, there's not a joke in the whole thing. It's just, I don't want to go. Okay. So yeah, I mean like, even if he was super influential, maybe we don't love, what he influenced, you know, like you did right. sort of like shit on comedy. And I mean, the other thing too, is that we see now of like, Oh, you were trying to fucking cleanse your soul, you yeah. know? And all, even the ones that weren't about yeah, totally. how I pushed up a woman against the wall the whole time you were trying to cleanse this soul. And look, Louie is more influential on comedy over the last decade than beep. But like we, we did our due diligence. We mentioned it. And uh-huh. I, I can't think of a better show that I wanted to lose again. And also, what's more influential on politics? Veep. I mean, <laughs> like, the, the people, we knew what we wanted after we saw Veep, and we put it right in the White House. Because yeah. It, yeah, it was yeah. so entertaining. We love this I docu found out the asshole. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I would say that, like, if, if we're trying to define comedy of the last 10 years, uh, I would like laughs to be part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, and Veep always makes me laugh. If we're going from the pilot of when Dan uh, tells... Gary, how to use a Keurig. And this was back when Keurigs were new. And the amount of uh, F bombs Dan put in, you just put the fucking pod in the fucking hole there and you hit the fucking button. Uh, and that's how I learned how to use a Keurig. <laughs> and that will uh, never not make me laugh. And watching Gary deal with Dan, that's how I learned how to deal with Mike. Like, <laughs> Mike is a Dan, uh, for sure. And Ryan's a little my bit Batman, handsome. AKA my Gary. <laughs> way less handsome than he thinks he is. Hell yeah. That could be my claim to fame. It is time to vote, and I feel fine about that. Greg? I guess I'm going to go with Veep. No, obviously, it, it feels so good to vote for no, Veep. I, I thought you were backtracking. No, obviously, it's Louie. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be fun to make you, out of everybody in the room, defend Louie and why it should win. What <laughs> do you think you would say? Uh, I would say that it, it uh, just taken as a show... It elevated our conception of what comedy could be for a show so that comedy didn't have to apologize for itself uh, and instead could just be like, this is a philosophical look. Comedy is Mm -hmm. a life philosophy and that uh, adherence to comedy is like an adherence to, to an artistic form equal to any other artistic form and that it showed us that we could believe in that, which is why it's so much more painful. All that- right, I vote Louis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, hell yeah, I, I, I like that a lot. That was a great argument, uh, and I do want to pinpoint that comedy shouldn't have to apologize. Comedians, please apologize. Yeah, <laughs> just give it a shot <laughs> as a people. Let's see how that one works. Or you could not apologize, disappear for a year, and then show up on the conservative circuit. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, all those conservatives saying, yeah, come back. Taylor, which way are we going to go? Feet. Oh, this is going to be the one unanimous. I feel it. (laughs) Ryan? Veep. Caitlin? Veep. Cassie? Veep. We're all veeps here. (laughs) Veep goes on. Your next battle in the first round, 2013's TV Comedy of the Year, Parks and Recreation versus Cassie's pick, Community. This is one lovable group of misfits that shouldn't get along Versus a different lovable group of misfits that shouldn't get along. Cassie, argue for community now. Okay, listen. Community, there's so many misfits in there. There's so many. There's <laughs> at least six different misfits, and they come from different backgrounds. There's two olds in the group. And then we got the youngs. We got the... Two stri- olds? Two olds. Two olds. Surely. Two, who are the... Shirley Shirley is a year older than Jeff. They deal with that in the first season, you guys. She's sick of being thrown in with you. Well, after they get rid of Chevy Chase, after they're finally like, Chevy Chase, you are too racist. You have to leave. They bring in Keith David. Keith David or David Keith. Keith I never never came to it. And he he comes in and does a a great job. Uh, In the the Yahoo season, they also brought in Paget Brewster. Paget Brewster. Hell yeah. Paget Brewster, future pop filter Hall of Famer. Incredible. Mike Urban Trout was there for a while. Mm. So they went through their cycle of olds. Yeah. Yeah. But this was the one, like, you couldn't keep this one down. They were determined, you know, six seasons in a movie, and, like, it, so many people tried to take it out. Dan Harmon himself tried to take yeah, this seriously. one out. <laughs> he couldn't even himself. So it just, it holds a real, like, 
special place in my heart. It's just like a it's a fun one to like always go back to, especially the early seasons. It's a good, mm-hmm. a feel good one. And it's just like the paintball seasons, like they started their own, like that you have to watch the paintball season ones. All the theme episodes. Are the theme good. ones yeah. are big. It was a little gimmicky how they always had theme episodes, but they always delivered on them. So. Yeah. Well, they, they pulled it off and then I feel like it really was one of the like, Arr, like proto shows that did that that like half of the cw shows started ripping that off like mm-hmm. yeah. R- riverdale i don't think is where it is now without a little bit of community totally right yeah. every Just episode of riverdale is like this you know or arc is this is our slasher yeah. arc this is our detective yeah. arc this is our sports arc it also has strong what is so the, there's cold openings but what's that last little bit at the end uh, right before the stinger. credits stinger stinger those ones always always so good incredible no. Uh, the the, the the Spanish rap, I kind of uh huh. <laughs> Don't the they? Fact, Esta, the la biblioteca. One of the characters on this show is Donald Glover. Yeah, like yeah. They, they they yeah. lucked into that, you know, and and he, you know, Troy. Is... Do you remember though when he was a football jock? Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, you know what? No, I'm just gonna be Donald Glover though. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> what I'm gonna we... get weirder and weirder as it goes on. And if you guys had to guess, like. What was it about him, do you think, that they thought that he would be the football jock? Because he's not a big guy. <laughs> he's kind of spindly. He's like, you know, he's not very tall. It's they uh, Before Hamilton, they cast Colorblind because they wrote it for like, oh, oh, a white jockey dude. And then they're like, well, we're going to just see everybody. And he came in and just Donald Glovered all over the place. But they're like, I don't care what this character was. It's him. And then we're going to go with it. Yeah. And him him doing the out, uh, your views are your name's Al Gore because your views are wrong. Like, he yeah, can deliver what? old school football <laughs> things very I, well. I think about his politically conservative raps <laughs> once a week. Or, uh, or his We're not John notches. Curry. John Kerry, because you don't flip-flop. <laughs> uh, Cassie said something interesting. She said, especially when you go back to the early seasons, Caitlin, when, when we're talking about the comedy of the decade, does uh, how long it stayed great matter, or does... Do the peaks and va- do you take the peaks and valleys or the whole view? I think in this situation we'll have to look at how it stay like if it stays good or not because I oh. yeah because I, <laughs> yeah well Community the first couple seasons were really really good I think Parks and Rec did a really great job at kind of staying pretty consistent in what it was doing it but might I, have, it might have had some dips as even well. that mm-hmm. stinker of a last season <laughs> I, well I will point out that Parks and Rec also takes some beginning time to ramp up oh, before yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, most Mark Brandanowitz yes that's what most it's people tell you when you start the show just skip the first season the worst episodes of Parks and Rec are better than the best episodes of Community. Wow. Okay. Wow. Dang. Absolutely. The fact that Even when they're like all about true. battling Grizzle for who owns the town and it's in the future. <laughs> the fact that we're having no, this future season does not count. That's not part <laughs> of it. The fact that we're having this debate right now is adorable. But uh, uh, community can fucking no. Like, oh, <laughs> community. Ryan. I, I believe that you guys earlier in the segment said community invented making fun of genres. Which yeah, that's, and I no, stand by that. Yeah, <laughs> no, of course. Wonderful for community that it did that thing. But uh, Parks and Rec was one of, if not the best show on TV for seven years. Uh, community can fucking lick my dirty shithole. <laughs> uh, if you if you count its its whole ebb and flow for five years, not for seven years. Ryan, defend Community. Why could Community be argued it should go on? I, I mean, I think it's similar to Louis in that people were like, you know, uh, maybe we don't have a Rick and Morty without it. Like it, it was like, oh yeah, shit, now sure. now genre parody is <laughs> back. I think that uh, Community was to uh, a lot of people who did not watch the Venture Brothers. You know, like mm. this is this is how we make fun of genre, and we're going to do it. And uh, it brought it to the mainstream, and then a ton of people thought that they could now do it as well. And uh, so I do agree with that, but I don't know if Community did it that great for that long. Like I think I that the th- if you go back, I, there's more like dead weight than you think. Yeah, I, like there's a, so many stinker episodes. For every, but uh, there is also for every stinker episode. There's the dean dressed as a candy bar, yes. laughing until well, his eyes go. I'm, not, de- I'm dean, not talking about the dean. Yeah, the dean <laughs> never misses. The I dean mean, is the community <laughs> the exact opposite. Listen, of what there's Mark a Brand Danowitz is to Parks and Rec. <laughs> there's a reason that only one person on that show has an Oscar, and it's the dean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, like there was, there's some amazing episodes of Community. Um, yeah, that like that really do like oh man, you understand this genre and can make fun of it in such a way. But Parks and Rec gave us these characters that like we will never forget. A a a interesting. I, I think one. I'll remind you. There's a reason we're talking about a lot about community, not a lot about Parks and Recreation. Okay, yeah. It's just, probably a good thing for Parks and Rec. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Uh, 
And of talking about influences, something that's fascinating is looking into the future of the MCU. The writers of WandaVision, Loki, Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness. So many of them came from the writers' room of Rick and Morty and Community. Yeah, and Community even before Rick and Morty was obsessed with the multiverse. So it is Kevin I, Feige just looked at them and went, "You can do this. What, I, you know where I'm trying to do, and you already write the multiverse." I don't know if this is an argument for or against Community, but I do think it's interesting that were it not for the worst season of Community, Rick and Morty would not exist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that depends on how you feel about Rick and Morty and its fans. Yeah, mm. I, neutral. I'm not. I take I take no stance publicly. Yeah. <laughs> don't ever. You spell it uh, like rock and murdy, just so you don't like attract <laughs> people to your tweets. Let's vote now, Cassie. Um, you know I got to stay strong to it. Stay true. It's community for me. If you had to argue for Parks and Rec, what would your argument be? Um, it's really fucking good. It's just so fucking good. She's crying. <laughs> it's really- yeah, that, there's more emotion in there than I've heard from years of being your friend. So I know you voted for community technically. It was mainly but. because Ryan came so hard against it. So, <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin? Uh, Parks and Rec. Ryan? It's, it's, it's a bigger slam dunk than last time, Parks and Rec. I'm going to vote Taylor. for community. It was very important oh, to me personally. Yeah. <laughs> How, how how did it help you make uh, you are who you are today? It, it was the first show that I found in college. So just extrapolate from there. I'm on sure. my own for the first time becoming a person. And the show takes place at a college. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Yeah. It was, uh, and it, your dad once said you, he didn't want to be your dad, right? Yeah. And so you really related <laughs> to Abed and Jeff for that? Yeah. It, it was recommended to me by the professor who later got fired for um, fucking one of his uh, his graduate assistants and forming like a ethical christian non-monogamy whole thing wow. yeah the, uh, the baptist university didn't like that so that, that's there's a whole lot going on there i, th- I think on that make show that a show friend <laughs> talk your make community. that a greg. show yeah that's a small <laughs> drama <laughs> and greg I, I agree with what ryan said I, I think like at its worst parks and rec is better than community at at its best it's a more uh sort of pure show i think it goes for way fewer cheap jokes and instead has jokes embedded in like real characters and real life mm-hmm. uh, I, I, I mean all time ensemble like yeah yeah for sure I gave us chris pratt who continues to delight us as far as i know <laughs> yeah Neutral. let's not look into the Neutral. future of yeah. any of these people's careers not right? think about that at all all right parks and rec moves on we're going to take the quickest of breaks for you our longest break of the night for us and when we come back more battles Hola, Felterinos. I just wanted to interrupt real briefly and say thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. If you want to support us a little more directly, you can go to patreon.com slash yourpopfilter. There, depending on what tier you pick, $1 a month, $5 a month. If you're crazy, anything more than $5 a month, don't do that. You can get extra content. There's extra shows, extra series, uh, behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, you could pay for ryan to draw you a picture Uh, i can write you a poem you can get the shirts off our very own backs all of that and so much more over at patreon.com slash your pop filter while you're on the internet you should check out shady monk he does all the tunes you've been listening to he's on Bandcamp. he's on spotify uh soundcloud wherever kids get their music these days that i'm too old to know shady monk lives there uh you can probably follow him on twitter and instagram as well that's shady monk wherever you get music Check him out. Round one. Battle three. 2015's Comedy of the Year, Master of None, versus 2017's Comedy of the Year, Bob's Burgers. It is a delightful, cartoonish romp of a family singing songs and making bad food versus another auteur who turned out to be a sex pest. Ryan, dive right in, my friend. Did anybody watch the Aziz Ansari-less Master of None? No, it I did just, not. No, I want Nobody to. Nobody did. Yeah, it's no. just like I love her. Yeah, anything but... like anything he's a part of, it just feels icky. Yeah. It's not even like I, I, I'm not mad, but like it's just I don't want to watch anything with him in it. That he was in the Park and Rec, the uh, like Zoom show that they did. And he was just so disheveled, big and like, chunky yeah. sunglasses, and looked awful. Yeah. But still, anytime he spoke at all, it was well, like life is hard when you get accused of doing what you're doing. I. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike, this is this is going to be a rough segment because it's a show that brings us endless delight versus another <laughs> auteur who has disappointed us. <laughs> what should we do? 
Bob's and Bert. Bob's and Bob's Bert. And Bert. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this right out the gate. I never liked Master of None. It like this. This isn't like me doing a little like. Oh, I, I truly. I never got into it. It never once made me laugh. It never interested me. So. I know exactly what my vote not is. Not even the big it's guy, little a... guy dynamic between... Did you, get, did you see it's that? It's like just the barest amount. I was yeah. like, oh, it's fun when two people are different sizes. But like, you yeah. gotta do better than that. But it is fun. You, right? gotta, yeah. like, you gotta have more than that to sustain a show. Yeah. And they just... It didn't for me. I think I tried to watch it like I... three times and I fell asleep every single time. Yeah. Mm. Like I, could, I couldn't keep my attention. Bob's Burgers keep me awake at night. <laughs> um, it terrifies you every time. How are they uh, making enough cool. money to survive? <laughs> I'm worried about. Them. No, that does. Your, look at your taxes, guys. What are you doing? Like, uh, I, I I loved Master of None the first season and the second season. It was like different. I I think to all these comedians, uh, obviously the right advice is don't be a sex pest. The second advice is don't mirror your career on Woody Allen stuff because then of course you will become a sex pest. Yeah, don't invite journalists over and then try to pressure them into having sex. And then reveal yourself to be a terrible person. No, I like the way that Mike puts it, which is like, well, I'm a fucking super awesome guy who's very smart and very funny. I'm going to make this type of show. Oh, my God. I'm pesting sex-wise. What happened? <laughs> oh, no. Why did I go to Woody Allen? My pesto. But, <laughs> speaking of pesto, Jimmy Pesto and his across-the-way neighbor, Bob's Burgers. This and show- Jimmy Pesto's son's best friend, Zeke. It's funnier oh, yes, than yes. anybody on Master of None ever. <laughs> that is Fact. so true. Zeke rules. I try to bring Zeke energy into every day. Like, yeah. yeah. Before here's what Greg bought to the studio today, he was like, one, two, three, Zeke. And then he busted <laughs> and then he in. Here's, ripped his short sleeves off. <laughs> here's what I, I love about Zeke. He's just so enthusiastic. And he has one person he's specifically enthusiastic about, right? And he, get, <laughs> he gets so fired up. Uh, and it's just like, it's not about him. It's about just like... Reppin for Jimmy Jr. I the one of the many times I wish this was a video show because you kept making eye, t- eye contact with your JJ uh, and that is Taylor. Which of course is Taylor yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Taylor the is enduringly patient with that bit, which I appreciate. <laughs> yeah, where it's like into it most of the time, and everyone's on Jimmy Jr. just go, okay, Zeke, just calm down. Yeah, well, because he like, <laughs> also, Zeke captures this thing about young boys that you don't see a ton, <laughs> that you don't see a ton, which is they're always scrapping. Uh-huh. They're like, always yeah. scrapping. If you have like a bunch of boys that are like ten or eleven or something, or even all the way up to like fifteen, like, and you just leave them, like two of them will start wrestling in seconds. If you're like, if right you're around away. boys that are ten or eleven, uh, keep that palm ready to like catch a forehead. Yeah, yeah. so you, they are just swinging at you, but not actually hitting you. They just they'll suck you right in the nuts. all over each other, and that's what he does. Anytime he gets excited, he just drags Jimmy Junior to the ground. Like I don't I don't want to blow up your whole fucking little anniversary shows. Oh, I'm like, oh, let's do this. But uh, I could see Bob's Burgers taking this all the way fucking down. Yeah, especially oh, yeah. if we think of it like as going over the like the, the yeah. most time claimed, and well, for it being it's, like it's, the and same it's eleventh quality. season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, it, it, and it, it, it has yet slow to see down. a dip. Like, yeah, for a I can't think of a lull season. Mike and I went to a show where we saw all of the cast in costume, and they brought out what was the giant monster they brought out? There was, was a snake, a, right? A snake. Yeah, yeah. Snakes. I'm. Just afraid of snakes. <laughs> uh, they brought out a snake. They brought out a Topsy the elephant. Uh, there was like a big brass band that walked out, which is how the show ended. Uh, it was delightful. And you know what? None of these other shows on this whole goddamn list did that for yeah, us. Yeah, Louie. Where's your fucking live <laughs> elephant show? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like we could just vote right now and continue to talk about Bob's Burgers excellence as we go on. Cassie. Uh, it's Bob's Burgers. Greg. My wife and I do something where we get in and out, which is the greatest burger place in the world, I guess. And uh, we eat the burgers <laughs> while we watch Bob's Burgers, and we call it Cosplate. So that's I fun. am that's a fun. Bob's Burgers boy. <laughs> that is delightful. All right, that's two votes for Masters of None for some reason. <laughs> Caitlin? Uh, Bob's Burgers. Taylor? Bob's Big Boy. Ryan? I don't even know. What was it up against? Master of None. Oh, right. Uh, no, it's Bob's Burgers for sure. Master of not going to be here anymore. (laughs) Next battle is 2018's Comedy of the Year, The Good Place, the second Michael Shore, who knows if the last of the battle, versus 2016's Insecure. So this is a ensemble comedy versus a creator-owned. Some could say one of the the good benefits of the post-Louis era is uh, other people started to be like, you know whose uh, worldview is more interesting than an old 
white guy? Like Nobody? anybody else. Oh. <laughs> no, I thought yeah. it's anybody else. I thought we were going to have like uh, something we like versus somebody problematic in every battle. <laughs> no, unfortunately, some of these are really going to hurt. And this is one of those. I, I have to just throw out a disclaimer. I, I, I studied philosophy at a Christian university. So th- this is like... Is that a you can't oxymoron? Get, no, nah. But you can't get <laughs> you can't get more up my butt than the good place. So it's it's like impossible for me to pick another one. So you guys just talk about insecure but, more. So you're saying so you, up your butt? Yes, is the good place. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that is his opening line at those bars. But Taylor, to, to argue for to why you should also like insecure, it is about uh, a struggling artist being very poor in L.A. That okay. Listen. And not really believing in herself. And that's you to a T. That is. Th- listen, both of them are me to a T. One is just a little more. Spe- one one feels targeted. One feels a okay. little bit targeted. And the other one's like, we can scatter shot this one. We can hit this I have this seen one. you shirtless try to give a bunch of students a pot of chili. That does feel very. <laughs> yeah. Ill. Yeah. One thing I like about Insecure is uh, you watch her be so cool with her friends just in conversation. So funny and and generally collected and then anytime you see her try to do anything professional isa just looks so out of sorts you keep waiting as the audience for her to like just be very successful and i think finally at the end of season two something works out for Mm -hmm. her professionally beside the obvious like what is it that separates insecure from louis and master of none which is stand-up comedian or you know like she's legit famous comedian uh going through all of their uh, philosophies and therapy and i think that one she's a better uh tv writer you know we're like it's not yeah we thought we were, we, we were like t- uh, tv comedy is free because they could just do these one-offs but she really did string stories together better than she, the other yeah, two she, the, it's not short film she looked at the medium and said you know what matters is and she she has the most realistic arc in any show because it is so slow and it is a, so, unpeeling yeah. when you're like oh wait Dev, Aziz's character in Master None is kind of a dirtbag. It's not a huge reveal. You're like, yeah. But when you're like, oh, Issa's kind of an asshole, it kind of hits you. But it, there's this thing, too, of like, with Dev, that was the kind of asshole that we were supposed to look at. You know, like, right. I will reveal 30% of myself, you know? Whereas with Issa, man, Issa is the villain of so many episodes. And, and she balances, even though she is the ultimate creator, it is equally... Molly's show, especially the the longer the show goes on, like it is not. I only care about this one person because this one person is basically me. It is I care about this world we're creating yeah. and that relationship. Her relationship with Molly, yeah, that relationship. The, yeah. the second season makes you really confront how much you want to see them together and how painful uh-huh. it is to see them at war and how much with you took each for other. granted the fact that like they were friends, so they're friends forever, right? That's how it works. Even though right. they were obviously going like the first season is about them obviously going in very different directions. So and then like, uh, you know, like your twenties and your something is about friends and then the rest is family and like but like that's not how TV's supposed to work. It's not supposed to address that. When you're friends on TV, you're friends forever. And right. this this show was like, no you're no you're not. Yeah think of how often on a TV show all of the group of friends, except for one person, goes to that one person's job to tell them something. <laughs> like that always happens on New Girl. They all run over, like they all get together and they go see Winston when he's on the job as a cop. Or as they a all policeman. Go, they all go walk into Jess's class. They're like, Jess, we got something we got to tell you. Like, the, oh, schools but, are pretty cool about strange grownups just walking into the and class. Principals you know, right? or police chiefs are like, this is wacky but important. I'll allow it. <laughs> hey, yeah. you're friends. Okay, <laughs> we get it. Then the good place it was a uh, a philosophical diatribe about what it means to be good or bad, and it's super funny at the same time. I I think that the lesson that comedies in general should take from the good place is one that not enough shows take, which is know when it's time to end. Like they could have yeah. done the good place for another five seasons. Know like, when it's time to walk through that portal, right? Yeah, and and I think that they chose the exact right time. They're like. Yeah, we know. Like, we have one more season in us. We did three of the best seasons of television you've seen in a decade. Uh, let's just knock one more out. Let's do a little victory lap and call it a day. It's so funny. I've been rewatching it, and it's so much more clear when you rewatch it that they had they knew where they were going the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Watching it, I was like, yeah. what are they going to do next? How are they going to get themselves out of this one? 
And now watching it all over again, it's like, oh yeah, well they just pl- they planned out like basically a, a full it's, story arc. It's what you wish Lost was. Yes, like <laughs> like the people who say, oh no, we had it all planned for the they knew like step by step. And yeah. it's so obvious, and it worked. Just yeah. do that more, you guys. It's also the only like a comedy that has like cliffhangers at the end of its season, which you never see. There was like yeah. legit cliffhangers where they would switch it up right at the end, and you're like, "Holy shit! I can't wait! I don't know how they're going to solve this." And even though it's such a wackety ass premise, it's not like just the people you work with in your office or the people right. at the bar you mm-hmm. go to. It's still more human than those shows because it is intricately devoted to like an inspection of the human condition and so two right. demons talking to each other is more human than half the scenes in, in your average sitcom that's why i would argue that the good place is a, a lot better than most if not all of these like auteur led like semi-serious comedies at like mm, dealing yeah. with serious issues because it is just a funny inspection of the human condition writ large like with puns in the background yeah what do we owe to one another <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and like really like getting down to what it yeah what that means yeah. and and exploring how how and why we all feel so guilty, you know, because the, in the same way that in the good place that there's no one can get into the good place anymore, we feel that way about our own modern condition that we are so enmeshed in a system that makes us guilty even before we are aware of that. That I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Next, <laughs> I eat plastic and guzzle oil. <laughs> well, I did leave my car running. <laughs> well, you don't want it to get too warm. In well, there. I just I have my dog in there. <laughs> He's listening and to his tunes. <laughs> all the windows are rolled up real tight. Caitlin, what did you learn about being a person watching The Good Place? I learned that you had to walk, talk, and then die and go into this awesome, cool place <laughs> <laughs> that ends up not being cool because it's a bad place. Uh, no, I... Uh, I really like this show because it gave me a lot of hee-hees, but then also I feel like I learned things, like philosophy and stuff like that, which is crazy coming from a comedy that I was, you know, used to. So (laughs) it seemed very good. So it gave you the hee-hees. What about the ha-has? Definite ha-has as well. (laughs) Okay. But also, aren't there like four episodes at Uh, least of this show that probably will make you cry? Like the the the, 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 the final episode of every season is legitimately... Like very painful, and, mm-hmm. constant reinvention every season yeah. of what what they're doing. It has that, and, and then Pillboy. So Pillboy, Pillboy, and Pillboy. Pillboy. And then shirtless Cheedy making a chili. <laughs> so good. It is time. This is also the show that I like, uh, <laughs> thank you, Mike. Um, <laughs> Uh, girls, I learned by watching the show, girls aren't just all about uh, dudes named Chris that are in Marvel movies because Cheedy and what's his name. Jason? Jason are fucking... Whew, girls are into those two gentlemen. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to look like a Chris. You can be some other just, almost impossible, impossibly yeah. beautiful person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With a perfect body. <laughs> they, Does that mean we could be that? They, no. <laughs> they never address that in that show. At, or no, at some point, I think they say that Chidi... To, to fight anxiety, started doing push-ups. Yes. So, yeah. that, which I I, that was the real. And I can uh, tell you, Chris did not work for me. <laughs> but I thought that was a real. Andy got thin because he stopped drinking beer. <laughs> How much beer were you <laughs> drinking? <laughs> yeah, too much probably, huh? I saw a picture on Instagram of Manny Jacinto. Yes, uh, with uh-huh. long hair. Yes, with six point four billion likes. It yep. was uh-huh. insane. Yeah, uh-huh. this is Jason, the guy who loves the fucking Jacksonville Jaguars, right? Portals. So. Portals. He's dull. <laughs> All right. It is time to vote. And this one does hurt at least me, if not everybody in this room. Ryan, which way are you going to go? You know what, dude? I The Good Place is one of my favorite shows of all time. Michael Shore is one of my favorites of all time. But uh, I, I, it's insecure. I think that uh, I think that Michael Shore has a problem with putting too much plot into his comedies and not mm-hmm. just relaxing a little bit. I'm working through this with uh, Rutherford Falls. And I think that the good place is where it started. Uh, Insecure is just... I do feel like Issa Rae is, you know, just bearing all and I'm feeling it. And the although the fourth season, the most recent season was a little lacking, I think it's, I think it's as funny and as important. I'm going with Insecure. Caitlin? I'm going with the good place. Uh, you don't want to talk way longer than that? <laughs> no. Like, like me? It's just very good. I feel like it uh, It moved us all, and it moved me to vote for it. 
Cassie. Uh, I too am moved to vote for the good place. <laughs> Greg. I was always excited to see the good place, but it was a little bit different when like, you know, to say to my wife, insecure is coming back or we have a new insecure uh, on the DVR. So that's just that feeling there. I had to go. That means that's telling me insecure is the right choice. Oh shit, we got a Yeah, but tie Taylor break already voted. <laughs> Ta- yeah, he did in his opening. Yeah. He went, Here, to go I'll back say to the cuz I love the way that the show Insecure is shot and lit. I think that the yeah. cinematography is great yeah. in that show and more comedy should take from that. I've been wa- we've been watching a lot of movies from 1975 for our re- most recent right. season of movie of the year and uh, in 1975 the way they shot people of color it was so like sad and terrible. Uh, a show like Insecure shows that if lit the correct way, you can really like yeah. show how beautiful that skin is instead of the disgusting 1975. Yes. The way in my head it works is that you look at flesh colored band aids on a black person, you're like, that isn't flesh colored. Wait, let's change the lights. Oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> imagine just imagine the same thing though. Like imagine when you were on your computer. Like you're on your laptop in the dark and the camera comes on suddenly and the way you it. see yourself. <laughs> yeah. Like imagine if that's the way they lit white people and like that's the way yeah. we looked on film. That would not be fair. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Anyway, I'm voting for the yeah. good place. <laughs> I, I think often about that there's a scene in the first season of Issa and Daniel when she's not sure if she's going to cheat on Lawrence and it is, it's all purple yes. hues and it's yes. the sexiest visuals oh. that a shitty LA apartment couch has ever looked. Yeah. That they should win some Oscars. Unfortunately, they don't make movies. It's an Emmy <laughs> category. But also, The Good Place is what's moving on based on votes. That hurts. Yeah, that one was rough. And we have to take a break. <laughs> well, that is very, very funny. Or very sad. And perhaps now you have something to think about. Or very problematic. And perhaps we have something to think about. But in any event, I'm sure you have some reaction to what you're listening to. So why not check us out on the social media? You can go to Instagram or Twitter and find us at Your Pop Filter. Email contacts at Your Pop Filter. Hey, everybody. Keep watching them movies. Round one, battle five is Caitlin's pick. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend for- versus the 2019 TV comedy of the year. Fleabag. Uh, Caitlin. Mm-hmm. It is two batshit but lovably charming women. Lead comedies going head to head. Argue for Crazy Ex Girlfriend. Oh my God. I, okay. So, first of all, Crazy Ex Girlfriend, very, very good show. It's one of those shows that is good from the first re- season through the last. Uh, it is a musical comedy, so it adds that extra layer on it. And I feel like it does uh, a musical without making it cheesy. And then it goes so deep into things that, um, like, real issues with people like you think it's all funny and quirky in the beginning but then you get to break it down and learn so much about these characters and the arcs of all these characters i feel like it does such justice to them and anyone mm. who hasn't seen crazy ex-girlfriend needs to watch it and, and Mike, i think it's mostly everybody right i, I think yeah. yeah very low rated show yeah Wasn't it if, like the if, worst if, rated show every season it was on yeah if which, this I group loves it it means the rest of the world's like what is that <laughs> which, it, it also shows cw refuses to cancel a show mm-hmm. yeah just won't yeah. Do or promote both. <laughs> but honestly, a lot of people that have shows on the CW, they're like, I appreciate the fact they won't cancel. Us. I, to be honest, yeah. did not hear about the show until Mike, our host, our beautiful host today, yes. um, did bring it up to me or, or, and talked about it and said, hey, this show would be great for you guys. And so we watched it like a week after it fin- it like actually hey. finished oh, up. You okay. seem like you need a joy show about mental problems. <laughs> Go check yeah, this out. <laughs> hey, this seems like it'd be for you. But yeah, no, it's it was very good and changed my life. And I'm, if you watch it, it'll change yours too. But that's a promise. And it's going I, believe, I honestly believe that. Though. Yeah. yeah <laughs> like no, I, that's real. I really do think that because it starts off and you think that it is just, you know, uh, kind of a cute uh, mm-hmm. you know, meet cute style. And you're like, I'm not sure if this girl's really like, if she should be pursuing this guy, is this a smart decision she's making? And then you realize that no, the show is about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then watching her like, you know, confront what her problems are and getting two songs per episode yes. mm-hmm. and good song. Two bangers per yeah, episode. Yeah. Very rarely would there be an episode where like 
both of the songs was not amazing. I think it starts out in the first episode with the sexy getting ready song. Sexy getting ready song. <laughs> and yeah. It's the sexy getting ready song. Talking about how real disgusting it is for women to get ready because there's just so much that goes into it. <laughs> I, I, it's it's hard to think about. I mean, like Fleabag is an all timer television wise, mm-hmm. but it's hard to think about somebody who uh, TV wise means so much to us as shit. As a unit, Rachel Bloom as mm-hmm. Rebecca mm-hmm. Bunch. Did I get those yes. RVs correct? You did. Yeah, uh, yeah, nailed it. Um, yeah, Rachel Bloom is so important to us um, as a TV creator, as a music writer. What I was trying to do was look up the guy who was in charge of music, who was also the guy from who Founds of Wayne, Founds oh, yeah. of Wayne, who Adam. died of COVID. Of COVID, yeah. right? Yeah, geez, the um, But uh, Mike and I, we have seen it. Greg, I yeah, think I saw him I with was you. There. Uh, Pop Fest, the one and only the EW Pop Fest, where we saw this guy like do his one, and like this guy like uh, Weird Al is like the guy who could change his genre the most, probably the most musical genius we've ever met. But Adam Fountains of Wayne might be up there. Yes, oh, he definitely is. Remember who else played at that Pop Fest? Janelle Monae and Lizzo. Oh, dang! Wow, very cool folks. (laughs) That was a that was a great show to get to see. Fleabag is an all timer, and we are going to get into it. But Bob's Burgers won because Ryan reminded me that we went and saw them live. And he just did the same with Crazy Eggs Girlfriend. Let's see what happens next. Fleabag. Adam Schlesinger. Adam Schlesinger. Thank you for looking that up. Fleabag is another uh, comedic deep dive into... This one is more grief than mental health. Mental health is obviously part of grief. Uh, I'd say, like Insecure, another one of the better spin-outs of the Louis... Uh, give them a Louis deal. Have this auteur of comedy just do what they're gonna do. There's something about uh, because we've talked about Insecure and Fleabag, and then we've talked about Louis and Master of None. There's something uh-huh. about maybe the female auteur that's like, I'm fucked up. Do you get it right? And then where the boy one is like, I'm fucked up. Do you accept my apology? You know, <laughs> I think yeah. there's something that like. Women brings find, you in with Fleabag. Yeah. Women have this ability to be fucked up and then not sexually assault anybody. <laughs> yeah. Which is just, Great. guys, we got to figure welcome. out. Yeah. I don't know. That seems like you're painting with a broad brush there, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I will say uh, the, the case with Fleabag is also, I think a part of it is British, you know? Yeah. You, can, you, you can't ignore British. And also, this was not Phoebe Waterbridge's like first show. Like A lot of these were just like, I'm a comic and I've made my first show. This was right. like her third show, I think, where she'd done this. Like, And you can tell it, it, another show where she knew exactly where it was going to go. And yeah. I, like when she didn't have story to tell, she was like, I'm not going to do it. And talk about like, obviously, people have been rigged the fourth wall forever. But like when she first started doing cracking and then leading up to that, it's in the second season when she's with Hot Priest and then he does it. Like uh-huh. and he's talking to God. And it's like, what the fuck is going on here? That's like, how you know that they definitely should do it. Breaking the fourth wall is terribly hack. Yes. To explain it is terribly hack. The fact that they this show got through both of those things and not feeling hack was yeah. pretty amazing. Though when he noticed she did it, yeah. He's like, what are, what are, what are you doing there? To? And then she tries to do it again. If you get caught doing it the first time, <laughs> no. don't stop. do it again. Just stop. <laughs> but when you see that he can see the camera, you're like, uh oh. Oh. Man, these two. It's time, it's time to go to should, God. God. I have never yeah. seen a show that was that horny. Yeah, yeah dude. It, like uh, in the daytime. There is, because you know what? <laughs> there, in front of the Lord. There is nothing hornier than not having sex. Yeah. Like once yes. you have sex, sex like, that, really does that's ruin so sex. easy. Yeah. yeah. Then, like the last thing you want to do. The, or yeah, after you have sex, the sex is the last thing you want to do, right? So sex is like whoopity, whoopity, hello. <laughs> well, man, if you just never do it, then you're just horned it's for so an entire hot. season. Yeah, <laughs> no, we can't. Ew. And the one telling you is God, the most powerful power imaginable. Ugh. Oh boy, I don't deal well with power, Lord. <laughs> All right. I don't know what I want to win. This is really difficult. These shows are too similar, and sometimes the random of his life hurts, which I think both of them are kind of about. Cassie? Uh, Fleabag surprised me by the fact that I enjoyed it, because there's a lot about it that I shouldn't. Uh, normally, British comedy goes over my head, So, and but Hot Priest really got me. But, I mean, <laughs> Crazy Ex-Girlfriend was just so perfect. It's, it's just, uh, it's too much up my butt, I guess. So, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. <laughs> Greg? I don't think we should say things like "hot priest" really grabbed me. On this show. <laughs> uh, no, it's okay because lo- it was hot. 
I love uh, I love Crazy Ex Girlfriend, but this is not even a, a competition for me. Fleabag, all the way with an oh, exclamation point. So exciting, Caitlin. Uh, you know I'm going for Crazy Ex Girlfriend. Yeah, you always do, Taylor. Fleabag, absolutely. Oh, I love all the this. way Fleabag. Ryan, you are the tiebreaker in this. Like, Ooh. what are are we saying? What is the best show? Or like, are we doing like a pop filter? Like, what is the most important thing to pop filter? I always kind of have my thumb on the scale towards that one. Gut, man. Go with your gut. What does your gut tell you? I'm no, guessing it's a big message. It's Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Whoa! Wow! wow. I shouldn't have said blue. gut. I should have said your head. What does your head yeah. say? <laughs> listen, I don't listen to my gut. It tells me that I shouldn't eat dairy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, poopy Lottie. <laughs> crazy Ex-Girlfriend moves on. Your next battle is... Friend of the show's McKenna, a.k.a. Books Pick Russian Doll, versus 2012's TV comedy of the year, New Girl. This is, I would say, the most traditional sitcom style comedy versus a loop de loop Groundhog's Day Time loop. of N- Natasha Leone's weirdness. Sweet birthday, baby. Sweet, right. birthday, sweet birthday, birthday, baby. Gave, gave us sweet birthday, baby. Is that what we should have announced when Greg came <laughs> yeah, in? Yeah, yes. Oh, man. <laughs> sweet birthday, baby. Gave us a lot of, like, some of the best Natasha Leona, and she already has such a, a strong catalog. Mm-hmm. Uh, also gave us a little bit, like, horror twist. Great twist in this. Uh, every time a new wrinkle is added. I loved, when Russian Doll was out, I loved the Leona songs. I love how everybody who has Innocent has a name that rolls with yeah, Assange. you can't Isn't do it that otherwise. Nice? Yeah. Uh, I love the Liana Assange, but man, New Girl has, first of all, Nick Miller. Pop Nick Miller. Miller. In the AKA Pop Filter Hall of Fame. Pepperwood. Uh, yeah. Julius Pepperwood. Old mm-hmm. Spider-Man. I don't know, man. Like, Can we can we go fucking mainstream Frank Sinatra here? putting water next to shoes? Yeah. Uh, True Winston. American. <laughs> Winnie uh, the Bish, a.k.a. Uh, uh, Chocolate uh, Thunder. A game we've ripped and put into our own real lives. Mike, at your bachelor party, we played True America Mike. Yeah. That was stolen from... Actually, guys, it was stolen from New Girl. Oh, yeah. I did not know. New Girl, one of those where you could watch an episode from any season. Yeah. And it just works. It's just good. It's just a good show, is what I would say about it. I'm also a big Jess fan. I know that we're supposed to say that, like, oh, she's the worst part, but I like Jess. She's not the no, worst part. That oh people gosh. are... Sexists are dumb when they say she, that. She's not the worst part. The thing is that she... The beginning of the show... It sort of assumes she's going to be the quirky one, but like by the end of the series, she's the straight man. She's the, the most normal. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's the part that I it think. Is, kudos on them for being able to make that shift. A lot like Community, they didn't exactly know what to do with Winston Bishop at first. Yeah, yeah. And so they didn't let him, the actor just like assert himself enough. Uh, but yeah, he's a classic example. And then like, Winston got fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, weird. by the time he gets a cat. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. it's, for, it's off the rails. Ferguson. There's an episode with him and Ricky Lindholm where their cats meet and get along, and the whole time he's talking about their cats getting together, she thinks she, they're gonna fuck. It's yeah. it's comedy gold, and it's amazing. <laughs> there was a season of like uh, him just saying, "Coach is gone. I'm here now." <laughs> and then after yeah. that season, oh my god, Winston P. Bishop. And speaking of coach, in the later seasons, there's uh, they find out he comes to L. A. sometimes and doesn't tell them. And yeah. they are furious. And he's like, I know you were in New York. You didn't hit me up. Big, si- We're adults. This is friendship, man. We can't always hang out. And I was just like, thank you for somebody saying that. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, it, maybe maybe we're stupid because we don't sit around playing Russian doll games about, like, which one of us is each Russian doll character. But I, Russian doll was seems- awesome and, and, like, convoluted in a good way and fun. But it's also, what, six or seven seasons of staying great versus one season that is really hard for me to fight yeah a lot of really good characters um a lot of like foundational performances Mm -hmm. and new girl i think is important to this particular group and so i think that's gonna also give it the edge in, Nick in, miller uh, is in the pop filter hall of fame nick miller is in the pop filter (laughs) hall of fame uh i don't know if i mentioned that in an era of fuck old sitcoms we're doing new stuff now it is our most traditional style sitcom saying you can still be really good about friends hanging out guys there's so many classic scenes of like the the kitchen in the morning and everybody's like here's what i have to do today i love Uh that shit and it's a very la show it's 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 about oh yeah a very affordable la loft yeah (laughs) 
go into I the thought beach. it was Chicago for the longest time. Because <laughs> they, they talk about Chicago so much? <laughs> yeah, because he just screams Chicago. Deep dish. That's what I like. <laughs> it's, it's sort of like the inverse 500 Days of Summer with Zoe Deschanel, where it's supposedly set in Chicago, but they just filmed it in L.A. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. L.A. for Chicago. All right, it is voting time. Taylor? Uh, I'm going to go New Girl. Absolutely. It's, it's just six, seven seasons. Perfect. Ryan? Yeah, man. Like, I love Russian Doll. I like Russian Doll less because they were like, we're going to do a second season. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Yeah. You kind of did it. Don't. You did the dang thing. It's New Girl. Cassie? There's just so many good characters. It's got to be New Girl. Greg? New Girl. And Caitlin? Yeah, so um, I'd like to go with New Girl, please. Clean sweep a new girl. Everybody here says eat shit books. We like Russian doll, but not enough to give you a vote. We are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, more battles. 2020s TV comedy of the year. What we do in the shadows versus Taylor's pick. Bo Jack Horseman. This is one of the goofiest comedies of any of the 16 that is aren't vampires fun and these old weirdos are weird and then this painted cartoon went you know what's you know what's funny not being funny look how dark this horse is and people love it i'm not the one to speak about bojack horseman at all so i'll throw it to taylor being a real dick right now it here's the thing it's fucked up that you put my pick against jackie daytona (laughs) and (laughs) and i don't appreciate it um but i think it's hard to deny bojack horseman it was from like the early crop of netflix i don't think netflix would necessarily be the streaming giant of its own content that it is today without a little help from mr bojack horseman uh it also i didn't know if he was gonna say it and then he said it yeah he did say it. <laughs> uh it, it it also changed the way that uh most publications review tv shows uh because if you look at the aggregate reviews for the first season they are much lower Uh, Because the show takes like four or five episodes to show you what it is. And before Mm. they would just watch three episodes. They're like, this fucking sucks. Uh, He seems a little defensive. I'm not. uh, Here's the thing. I like, I love both of these shows, but I think Bojack Horseman is the rare case of a comedy that can, it's still very funny always with moments of serious sadness, but it's doing the thing that the auteur comedians we've talked about are doing, but you get to do, a animated horse doing it so you don't have to feel bad when that dude turns out to be a real creep because it's impossible <laughs> best of both worlds baby i don't know mike can i take a fucking let me just go off what taylor was saying and i would like to talk about what we do in the shadows because it was not a great first season no. and disagree it, and it figured it shit out it was in a the bad second first, season first half of the first season i would say but bojack horseman did the thing. It did the thing. It did the thing of like, we're animal thing. puns and whatever. Mm-hmm. And then in the second season, through the eighth or whatever, became the single most important show on TV. Like, I would put Bojack Horseman along with Better Call Saul. And I know That's that what we, what we do in the shadows, like, it had an incredible second season, but... I would like to talk about what we do in the shadows. I would argue that what we do in the shadows had an incredible first season as yeah. well. I also don't think the first season was bad. That's yeah, crazy I, talk. Yeah. Uh, I think the first season, you can argue if you had already seen the movie that there's a little bit of retreading mm-hmm. um, in, in the very especially beginning. Especially the pilot. Yeah, especially yeah. the pilot. But like, you have to set it up. You can't assume that people saw an unrelated... Like, No one complains that Buffy the Vampire Slayer is doing a, a slightly different... They don't expect you've seen the I movie. I did. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we know Mike did. <laughs> but Bojack Horseman had probably two or three episodes per season that rewrote TV. Like, this was, look how crazy this was. There's the, like, under, the infamous underwater one. Yes, like the yes. silent mm-hmm. episode, right? Counterpoint, there, Jackie Daytona. There was one that took place <laughs> in like 2002 or 97, and it was the most thing that ever took place in that year of all time. <laughs> it right. is so, like... Depressing though. Yes. The, the, some of the stuff that happens in Bojack Horseman is the most depressing stuff I've ever seen. Like when he ODs with the, oh, or, yeah. or when the girl Ooh. that played his daughter roofs, on horsing around and she ODs right there, yeah. like yeah. on screen with your hero. Or when there's a 30 minute eulogy yes. for, at his mom's funeral. Yeah. Yes. What? Or Wait, he, which is revealed not his mom, just a lizard <laughs> person. 
And then uh, a lot of gray area with his relationship with another, like, underage. Like, the show did a lot of a lot of big things. It made the moves. But uh, it's... And one of the I coolest don't know, art a little, for animation. Is it a little too dark? Is that like... I think it's really dark. Like, I've seen a lot of... I feel like I watched a lot more of BoJack than I would have expected. But I feel like every time I walked out of it, I felt sad. But there's those times <laughs> where it's like, what's a butterfly? And then, like, a stick of butter flies away. That's yeah, no, funny, there's, right? some, there's some funny things. It's like, ha-ha. And then it's like, oh, oh my God. He's mostly keep, crushing. You keep thinking he's going to get better. Yeah. You keep thinking he's going to be better. And the show keeps being like, that's not this show. <laughs> I just... I appreciate the show for being able to pull that off in a post Breaking Bad world. Where yeah. you're some, you're a post Louie world. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is the show that's doing Louie and Master of None better than those two shows. You're supposed to understand that these guys just kind of suck, but no. Yeah. But it does also, it's one of the only ones that does provide in the very last season and the last episode, even, an actual realistic, like, yeah, I did some shitty things. I went to prison. I'm still dealing with it, but I'm trying to be a better person now. And I've, I like I, I I'm actually dealing with my issues and not just throwing them out and being like, ah, crazy, right? So more than Louis, maybe it owes something to my name is Earl. <laughs> People do not talk about my name is Earl enough. Not nearly enough in my book, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Is that in the bracket? Either. It you know what, Ryan? It is not. It was canceled long before Pop Filter ever existed. <laughs> I I uh, did some research today, and I was like, "Is Arrested Development going to be in the bracket?" And I looked it up, and it came out in two thousand three. Yeah, what, what the... yeah. guys? Two thousand three. That's why there's so many jokes about the Iraq War. Yeah, it's mostly about the Iraq War. It, it came out two thousand three. Was on for three seasons, and though even though everybody said make it more, they never did again, and that's crazy. But they yeah. never did, and never will. There are no later seasons of that show. Mm. <clears throat> I mean, it could technically be eligible. There's no fucking way it's eligible based on those two seasons. Get out of here. It's time to vote. Ryan, are you upset that just because we have Cassie and Caitlin, that our, our shining bright friends, if things get dark, they're immediately like, nope. Does no. that bum you out for this kind of vote? It doesn't bum me out. Uh, the fact that they're not bummed out does not bum me out. <laughs> but wait, we have Bojack versus what? What, what we, we do, do in the, the shadows. shadows. Yeah, and I mean, like, Again, I'm going to say, like, at best, one and a half incredible seasons. It's Bojack, and it's hard. Caitlin? <laughs> wow, that's really weird to say that it's hard. <laughs> no, it, he, it's a, he's, he's a horse, <laughs> and it's hard. All right. Um, yeah. I'm... Dick. Penis. Penis is what I'm talking about. He's talking about jizz. <laughs> Just jizz. I didn't say, I didn't say jizz. Yeah, you're being gross now, Caitlin. Nope, nobody you're being said disgusting. that I was allowed to talk about jizz. You're talking that about a male said. horse penis, and you're talking about jizz like a gross person. Say whatever we want. Well, um, yeah, I watched a lot of BoJack. Yeah, it's just not, it's not my, I don't like horsing around with it. So um, I'm going to go with what we do in the shadows, which was. The comedy of the year last year, right? It was, it was. And it deserved to be because it was an amazing show. And Over Ted Lasso. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll stand by that. This is great. Greg. Yeah, I really like what we do in the shadows. It's, uh, it's very much my stuff. I think uh, it, as much as it parodies vampire culture, I think that there's still something for uh, we crazy vampire fools. Mark Hamill's in the Jackie... Daytona mm -hmm. episode. Uh, it's it's almost perfect. And so even though there's less of it, I'm going to give it to what we do in the shadows. Oh, I did not expect that. And I love it. Woo. Cassie? Yeah, I go to comedy to laugh. So it's going to be what we do in the shadows. And Taylor, it's your pick versus a thing that you... It felt like what we do in the shadows was your pick when you were talking. So what do yeah, you do? I really... I don't... I'm actually not sure what side I'm on anymore. <laughs> now, what does the vote count right now? Does it matter... What I vote it, for? it shouldn't matter Doesn't. to you. Okay, well, Mike could call that he has two or three votes at any point. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I am going to vote for Bojack Horseman because it's my pick. <laughs> it is uh, three to two, and I could do that, but Ryan knows I infamously only watched the first five or six episodes when this show sucks and never again went back. So what we do in the shadows moves on. Your final battle of the first round is Greg's pick, Detroiters. Versus yeah. the 2014 TV comedy of the year, Happy Endings. Okay. It is two wacky ass groups hanging out and I would say being misfits in 
underserved cities of the sitcom world, Detroit, or, and I mean it this time, Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Greg. Okay, Detroiters, uh, the easy answer is to say... Wait, is this Chicago or Detroit? This is the one said in Detroit. <laughs> okay. Um, and it w- it's easy when you think of uh, Tim... Uh, Robinson. 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 Uh, to go to, I think you should leave. But honestly, the first place I ever saw him was in Detroiters. And this show, from its pilot, is a like fully realized world. They mm-hmm. are a, a very uh, faded ad agency, and a lot like people think of Detroit, this they're like you know their best days are behind them in this ad agency. But these two friends are just so wacky and lovable, and. Honestly, I think that there are funnier moments in I Think You Should Leave, but I think the f- like the more enjoyable show... It's the friendship. ...is Detroiters. Yeah. yeah, because the friendship of these two guys is... the it, it's And you get way more Sam Richardson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and you get a lot more of it. You get him at his most endearing and most... And also like, weirdest. Yeah. Like, on Veep, he is stupid. Annoyingly like, normal, yeah. Yeah. But, like, this is where he's, like, he goes off. <laughs> and uh i mean just watch the pilot by the end of the pilot you'll be like there's no other show like this on tv a lot of the roles have non-actors but it's like delightful oh, yeah. they're like so bad <laughs> but not like uh, uh the wire tim adult swims guy tim and tim eric, eric of like i'm making fun of these no yeah you know like they really cast well uh like Being you were looking Greg. for Tim and Eric, and I said The Wire. <laughs> <laughs> so Tim close, and Eric man. is kind of the wire of comedy, they say. You're the kind of person who frustrates Alex Trebek so much. <laughs> me, me and Greg are best friends, but our wives are like, you stop hanging out with that other person. Uh-huh. And we're always like, you shut the fuck up. And we just <laughs> scream curse words at them. That's how best friends work. <laughs> That's, That's what Detroit is talking about. <laughs> Yeah, but it also they also show like that like we have this idea of Detroit as a city as like this absolutely blighted hellscape, mm-hmm. and they shoot Detroit so beautifully, and they show that that's not just like that's only one side of the story of Detroit, and that every place has its its blighted areas, but also right. it's really glorious areas. And I say but that also as somebody... Detroit is a little bit still in the eighties. Yeah, know? like the way that they shoot stuff, like. They're a little behind us. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, the interiors of almost everywhere definitely does look like the interiors of their own office. It's like Mad Men. They took that office, put it into Detroit, and then aged it 30 years forward. And the way they shoot commercials is like, oh, you have not seen commercials from... Yes. (laughs) And they have a... Their secretary is, like, the secretary from, like, the the 50s or 60s. If she stayed alive. And she's just, like... Still tells all the stories of being like hot to trot in the exact world, and oh, doesn't she, she was still a get, like, drunk tati. anytime they go out to dinner? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and she finds out that like one of her coworkers is a lesbian and just handles it like an old woman would, was trying to be so cool about it, but making everybody so uncomfortable, <laughs> and then including like being like, "Am I gay?" <laughs> but it's just it's a warm, beautiful, wonderful show. And as much as I like, I think you should leave. At times, it lacks that you know. That warm, cuddly quality that I obviously mm-hmm. also like from comedy. I uh, I want to remind the listeners that it is not going against I Think You Should Leave right now, even <laughs> though Greg, Greg's monologue made it think like that might be. It is going up against Happy Endings, where if New Girl is uh, the sitcom that defines the group, Happy Endings is a sitcom that defines me as a human being and is my most rewatched and regoing too. I think it shows that. You don't to satire something or parody it. You don't have to scream. See, remember the time Seinfeld did this. Now we're doing our version of that episode. It is just saying all sitcoms are dumb. Let's have fun with it. Ryan, happy endings. Are you asking me to vote? <laughs> no, I wanted you to talk about uh, happy endings. I felt like I uh, that I was. I don't know if I told you, Mike, about this show, but I did tell Greg and yes. literally bought the DVDs. That's true. <laughs> and then I uh, told Cassie. And said, you know what, Cassie? Uh, I did that thing where, like, I gave it to her, or, like, told her about her, and, like, I did the finger right to the mouth, like, shh, 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 <laughs> shut the fuck up. Which Just Cassie watch. hates that shit. <laughs> Man, you don't love she it. Has human being. Told me she has repeatedly me She snarls to do. like you a dog. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I do feel like a sort of, like, man, we all think that, like, uh, network comedies are stupid, right? Mm-hmm. What about this one? And I cannot believe how... This is this is our shit. This is going to go all the way to the winner. A lot of talent that with that it, at its best. Adam Pally. God. Like, <laughs> Adam so Pally good. is probably probably the wins the entire show. 
Cassie or Caitlin, did you watch with Cassie? Yes, I did. I didn't watch as much as she has, but I have watched quite a few episodes and they're all very good. And I was really surprised because I hadn't heard a lot about this show. One thing I like about Happy Endings is it has a married couple that uh, like are hot for each other's shit. Yeah. They want to <laughs> fuck. And like that's just never done on anything. That, and it's, it's like, like the most subversive thing the show actually does is a married couple on a sitcom likes each yeah, other. Because <laughs> if you're if like if you're on a sitcom and you're single, you're allowed to rail. But if you are married, you're just supposed to sleep in those separate beds. But they're always like, mm, 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 yeah. towards each other. <laughs> they make and, other people leave the room because they yeah. just start getting on each and other. It's just, we it's, will not leave the room. It's <laughs> you fun should leave the room. Seeing that represented as well. Yeah. And it's, they still eat gross qual- uh, quantities of food as well. So. You know what's crazy is that like I think that we quote Detroiters a lot, but it's not as much as Happy Endings. Mm. Like, no. This is, I'm always saying, I'm Max. We also went to go see a live thing with the happy ending. Yeah. It's weird how many of these <laughs> things we've seen live. Well, it's why they're on the list. And I we guess, saw but guess... the average person doesn't do that. <laughs> no. like, I like this TV show so much, I'm going to go see the characters well, sit around and chat. The <laughs> average person doesn't make a podcast about all this stuff, Craig. <laughs> That's, That's true. We are better than most of the people listening, mm. is what I'm trying to say. Here. That's the conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> That was like so evil. <laughs> his head was that fully live back. Thing. Yeah, like his mouth was wide yeah. open. His head was like the word "ha" was actually coming out of his mouth. Oh, it's happening again! I felt like I could see like the comic book, like ha ha, like the speech bubble, like flying out. Are and then he drinks here? more water. Uh, is this a jigsaw situation? Uh, yeah, you're all trapped in that room. Is this find a way spiral out. from is this the spiral? book of Saw? <laughs> Is Chris Rock going to do a tight five about how marriage sucks? <laughs> Mike, let me tell you what's up. I do love yeah, the show please. that Happy Endings is up against. Uh, yeah, and? Mm-hmm. Is that you're no, you're saying saying vote. All right. Is that mean? Are you trying to damn it with faint praise? That's so rude. Greg, it is your pick, so you get to vote first. I love Detroiters. It's such a good show. But... Probably it is happy endings. I feel like again, it's it's very important to this crew. Uh, we're all a combination of two or three of the characters, and that's why we're all always at each other's throats and depressed. <laughs> so happy endings. <laughs> Ryan, vote. And also, there are six of us on this horn. There are six of those main characters. Oh, I'll do it. You and I'll do it right now. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Mike, you are clearly uh, stick me home tonight. What's his name? Dave? Dave? You are Dave. <laughs> oh, 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 uh, Taylor is Adam Pally. It's a good yeah. get. Cool. It's, it's a good, good get. And I am Brad, because you told me that I get to pick. Um, <laughs> Greg is... Cassie is Jane. Cassie is Jane. Mm-hmm. Caitlin is Penny. Oh, my God. Look at her. She's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> And that that's leaves... Greg Alex? Okay, I'll take it. No. Uh, he is the hottest think... of us. Well, let's take a break. <laughs> I'll come back later because Greg okay. is not Alex. Well, we'll check in. Yeah, it, you thought it was easy. It's actually a little bit I difficult. think I think how it works is this is what I always say about the Sex and the City gals as well. It's not that you're one of them. You're three or it's two or three of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, like you have one who's your major house and then one <laughs> who's kind of like your minor, right? right? You're one like descending or something. You've got like, a rising. You're going to yeah. be somewhere <laughs> in between them because yeah. they are them. We can't be right. them. We have to be some combination Whoa. of them. Yeah. We can't be them now, but we will learn to be. We will. Be. Yeah, we'll get better. <laughs> Happy Endings moves on. That is the end of the first round. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, the second round. Round two, battle one is HBO. HBO's? HBO's own Veep versus NBC's Parks and Recreation. We're going to do this real quick style. Say your final word, and then you say your final vote. Greg? I just This one comes down to personal preference, but Parks and Rec is like part of my entertainment life, and Veep just never quite cracked it. Parks and Rec is mm. probably, for me, a top three show, and I could very easily see it being... The comedy of the decade. Cassie? Yeah, Veep's just not for me, but Parks and Rec 100% is, so Parks and Rec. There's no love. No love in Veep. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor? Yeah, uh, same. I just Parks and Rec is just so ingrained in my pop culture DNA, it's gotta be Parks and Rec. 
Caitlin. Same Z's bro. Um, yeah, it's Parks and Rec. And Ryan. D- do we have to keep voting? I no. What would your vote have been? I think that's still interesting. It would have been Louie. I just think he did a <laughs> did a really good job of making it's, the show. It's you relate to time the most. to forgive him, everybody. Oh, does that? Do you, Louis is part of the second season for a while. Does that change any of your votes? It does suck. It does suck. It does for sure. <laughs> and keep in mind, he plays a cop. But Aziz Antari oh, yeah. was part of all of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, that sucks. That's why my vote's for Veep. In a way, both those guys bring the show down almost as much as Mark Brandanowitz, the fucking <laughs> Mark worst Mark Mark of any Danowitz. show ever. I no. hope he goes to jail. He's a listener. <laughs> we love you, Mark. <laughs> I what don't. are you charged with? No, we Just don't being love a you, Mark. Mark Brandon. We hope you are listening. Fuck you. <laughs> He's fine. The what else is he doing? But just see watch all the real girls. Parks and Rec moves on. Next up, it is 2017's Cartoon Spectacular. Oh no, this one does hurt. Bob's Burgers versus 2018's The Good Place. Mm. Oof. Are we going philosophical, thoughtful comedy or goofy ass family sing alongs, Caitlin? Shit, this one's hard. Um, wow. Um, I'm just going with my heart, and I'm going to say The Good Place. All right. Ryan, fart or heart? What are you going with? Uh, I'm going with fart, and I'm going with Gene Songs on the Bob's Burgers. <laughs> Cassie? Oh, God. It's Bob's Burgers has hit so many good episodes for so long. but I... Period. Done. Voted. <laughs> I'm going to go with The Good Place. Taylor? Uh, it's too far up my butt. It's The Good Place. Yeah. Greg, I love Bob's Burgers, but no! I think you run into a buzzsaw sometimes, and I think the Good Place is too much of a sure thing. Oh! 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 Damn, my birthday gift I gave myself. <laughs> Greg moves on. <laughs> Uh, I want to know if, if I want you guys to know if Greg had done Bob's Burgers. If anybody other than Ryan, if that, then I would have used my host triple vote. Bob's Burgers is the best show. Wait, I thought you had like double it. vote. You have triple vote. It's now? triple. I have what I want he to make it work, man. He has immense powers. I didn't use it for a while, so I get to use it double. But the good place moves on. Next up, it is ooh another. But we got to stop this. Is Crazy Ex Girlfriend <laughs> versus New Girl? Which girl is gonna take it oh, all down, ooh. Taylor? I'm gonna go. Based on me and myself and what I have watched more. No, based it on something else. Yeah, no, sure. Um, based on what Mike loves more, um, I'm going to pick the new girl. Okay. That's what you think <laughs> you know about me. Cassie? Mike, listen, new girl got depressing, and yet I still... I mean, uh, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend got depressing, yet I still liked it. So, big ups to it. I'm going Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Whoa! Yeah, that dude. is legit surprising. <laughs> <laughs> Greg? New Girl has basically been one of those shows that is just always on in the background for me, and I couldn't imagine living without it. All of these matchups are very tough, but yeah. New Girl is a Greg show for sure. You love New Girls. I do. I love I old girls. sound creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin? Uh, I'm with Cassie, whereas uh, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend got real sad and real depressing, and I continue to want to come back and see more and more and more, so... As much as New Girl is great, I think Crazy Ex Girlfriend is going to take it for me. Because it threw me for this loop, and Ryan gets to break this tie. Hmm. Let's think about this. I am a person with a ton of promise and ambition, and yet <laughs> a, uh, uh, just uh, revel in my loserdom and drunkenness. A real jest. <laughs> a real jest. I, uh, I have a friend who, uh, every time he thinks differently than me, uh, that's you, Mike, just screams the top of his lungs and does it in such a like a overt manner, just like, what? No, I don't! What, what are you talking about, Ryan? <laughs> and then, let's all look at Greg's Winston shirt right now. That's true. <laughs> my life is Nick Miller. My pick is New Girl. <laughs> that means New Girl moves on next up it is 2020's what we do in the shadows versus 2014's happy endings vampires versus weekend R- weekend <laughs> <laughs> that is true they brunch a lot <laughs> they yeah do. they do they brunch a lot <laughs> <laughs> cassie uh for i love what we do in the shadows but it, nothing can compare to happy endings ben, Every scene's so yeah. good. this was if this was two months ago cassie would not have seen I all these have episodes <laughs> I I'm have so to say, glad. the fact that Happy Endings got 
canceled before it could even peak. I think yeah. we'll always yeah. make it. We'll always wonder what could have been, but we'll always also like it a little bit more. Exactly. It feels like we know we're getting more what we do in the shadows. It's probably going to be pretty good, but happy endings will always be very good. And then at the same time, like we never had to suffer through anything yeah. bad. Right. We never also, had to have an unhappy ending. No. <laughs> also, what's important is that happy endings did not get canceled before like the second or third to last episode uh, where Dave heard a ding. On his oven and went. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the for no reason jokes that make a show. They're all the weird one. That's what's fun about that show. Yeah. <laughs> I've forgotten who's voting right now. Caitlin. Um, I this is hard. Um, I gotta go with Vampire Zone. I'm gonna go with what we do in the shadows because vampires do love soul. vampires. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You do love those vampires. Wait, Taylor. hold on. We should clear up. Mike, do you remember how people have voted? That is important for you to keep track of. Cassie said happy endings. Okay. I said Greg vampires. Greg said happy endings? Yeah, okay. Yes. So you're good. Caitlin said vampires. Vampires. I'm going to say what we do in the shadows. Ooh. Two vamps. That's just the crazy Two. way we talk in Arizona. I don't, see? <laughs> I was going to make Taylor the tiebreaker. But Ryan is now the tiebreaker because that's how orders work. No, that's how numbers work. One, two, two. <laughs> yeah, okay. Ryan, break that tie. Oh, it's happy endings. Absolutely. It's happy endings. For sure. Some some are calling it your pop filters comedy of the decade. I don't I don't know. This I'm here I'm here in the scuttlebutt, but we'll see. Next up, your battle is Parks and Recreation versus the Good wow. Place. We got sure, there, folks. Sure. We did it. Hot Ooh, shore on it. shore action. <laughs> What is better, his first show run alone show or his philosophical mind boggle? Parks and Rex is better. Yeah, this I, is so yeah. obvious to me. It's like yeah. uh, it's character over plot, and like man, plot really took the good place down. I but disagree. it's also I think so. but the good place never does. I'm the absolute cartoon version of myself. Mm. And Careful, Parks and bro. Recreation. Dies. I don't want to fucking fight you right now. I yeah. feel like the good place has consistency over Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec has some valleys. Yeah. It's got some valleys. Uh, I love when Ryan doesn't have an argument, so he yawns over your argument. That's yeah. that's a good sign. Well, yawn all you want. I'm wide awake, motherfucker. I came to fight. <laughs> Obi Yawn Kenobi over here. <laughs> I loved how Michael Short could. Uh, throw a million touchdowns on this team to get traded to some fucking New York team where it was just a ton of interceptions. I what? I don't know what, what that means, and I refuse mean? to respond. <laughs> Greg, this is the worst show. <laughs> <laughs> Parks and and Rec for sure. Just a uh, more consistently delivered good character based comedy, and less like as Ryan said, needing to get through a lot of a lot of plot points. I think that when you compare these two shows, it becomes obvious how much more superior Parks and Rec is. How about this shit, Bigger cultural footprint, too. Wait, we're, we're in the voting time. What, you're still trying to argue? What are you doing? How about what shit, motherfucker? If we threw all on, uh, both ensembles into a draft, you would get to, like, we would draft six Parks and Rec characters or actors before you would draft a... You would draft character. Jerry before you drafted yeah. anybody yeah. from That's the That's how much place. better this show is. Well, you draft Jerry, Jerry first. Disagree. You draft Little Sebastian. Disagree. Oh, no. I'm, did did the good place have a tiny pony? Yeah. No, no, I'm like, it I'm did, like actually. Adam, <laughs> it did like Adam, That thing was horrific, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Adam Scott. I don't get it. Wait, are we I voting? I think he's cute. Yes. yes, obviously we're, we're fucking voting. You voted for Parks and Rec, even though you didn't say it. Greg voted for Parks and Rec. Cassie, what do you got? Oh man. Okay, this um listen, love both of these. Parks and Rec felt like it didn't know when to end as much. So uh God. good place always had a plan, it knew what it wanted, it did it. Good place. Oh okay. that, that last season wow. was bad. It was a bad season. Oh yeah. my god. And Mike, it took you know a lot of build up. Mike, you know what to do. <laughs> Mike, you know this is a very hard battle, as many battles before, and I feel like I'd be happy with either one going forward, but I am gonna have to stick with my heart and say Parks and Rec. Yeah. Ooh. A good Taylor, answer. What would you have voted it's for? It's a good place, but I, I've been I've been once again disenfranchised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the plight of the young white Texan. That, isn't it always been like that in America? Listen, we're not represented, but someday we will. <laughs> <laughs> the South will rise again. Nope, don't Parks support and that. <laughs> I, I'll say that on record. You're have to log an objection to that. <laughs> Parks and Rec moves on your 
final battle of the semifinals is New Girl versus no Ouch. happy yeah. ending. This is it, guys. Which weird is... crew? Cecilia. Which weird crew? <laughs> Why would pop culture Cecilia. do this? <laughs> Why would they make two delightful weird crews for us to fall in love with and make them make us fight them against each other? <laughs> I'll you go know, first. What I'm trying uh, to... <laughs> New Girl definitely showed us like the degrees of wackiness until Happy Endings came out and said, "This is how wacky you think a you know wacky white what? cast could be." Yeah. It's Happy Endings, and it's not even close. A full what cast? White. What about Brad? Yeah, what about Brad? Brad is the whitest black guy <laughs> in the history of television. <laughs> Only when he's hanging out with his white friends. He hangs yeah. out with his black friends sometimes. Remember, there's a whole plot about it. <laughs> one episode, Mike. One episode. <laughs> All right. So you're voting for happy endings, I yes, think, I am. is what you said. All right. Cassie? Yeah, happy endings. Taylor? New girl. Caitlin? Happy endings. Greg? There's so much more new girl, and that kind of actually works against it, because... What is there for happy endings is just so much more pure. Also, Winston and Coach. I said two white casts. Winston and Coach are all new girls. So it's oh, it's, I bet you said what a white cast could do. You were just talking about happy endings. Also, Coach is Brad. Same guy same in our guy. two favorite shows. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Brad on Brad. But yeah, happy endings. It it, it is a uh, everybody against Taylor here. It, it's fine. It's fine. Some people have taste and others don't. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we know. All right. We don't know why you're a friend. You did, you give did. me the fucking garbage. Yeah, Armand you came on the show calling yourself a garbage goblin. So no, yeah, no. I think it was trash goblin. Trash which goblin. Garbage I'm goblin. A trash have a good goblin. Ring to it. I snarf the garbage. Gar- <laughs> garbage goblin actually sounds fancy. That sounds like there was a look yeah. down their nose. The trash goblin. Your final battle. Yeah, oh, this is yeah, it. It's happening. Is 2013's Park and Recreation versus 2014's Happy Endings. We like things we've liked for a long time, folks. That's <laughs> what this shows me. Some would say... I don't know what I'm going to do. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that Caitlin votes first. Oh, beans. Um, <laughs> cool beans? Cool beans. Uh, no, I'm going to go... I'm going to go with Parks and Rec. Greg. Yeah, I, I this has been very clear for me. As it's developed, I've always felt like I, I've had a pretty good idea. And seeing these two squared off against each other, Parks and Rec is just such a good show and is so important. And Amy Poehler is my friend. So <laughs> Parks and Rec. And has a lot more swagger than any of her characters would show you. In real life, Amy Poehler fucking owns a room. Yeah, yeah. dude. She She's is cool so cool in every way. If I met her, I, I would fawn over her totally. I once was catering an event and I have to say, excuse me, you're in my way. And just, blah, 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 blah. and she got what I meant. The, and and in the story in Bossy Pants that Tina Fey tells is the first time she ever met Amy Poehler. Amy Poehler was talking to Jimmy Fallon and swearing up a storm. And he was, and Jimmy Fallon said, uh, I don't like when you talk that way. And she looked at him and she said, I don't fucking care what you like. <laughs> and and well, Tina Fey was like, please be my best friend. <laughs> what makes Jimmy Fallon look worse in that story, which is my favorite thing to do, make Jimmy Fallon look yeah. worse, is he said, no, 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 ew, it's not cute. Yeah, mm. I don't like it. Who mm. can, like, honestly, who does care, Jimmy Fallon? <laughs> I'm going to dive in here and vote for happy endings. I'll dive because... in and vote for happy endings. <laughs> so now it's two to two. What's going to happen now, Taylor? It's it's Parks and Rec for me. I haven't seen the show Happy Endings. I'll come out and say you that. You should. It, you'll like it. And then we'll you circle back it. around. We'll, we'll pause here. Okay, yeah, yeah. You just knock them but out. But Greg, you voted for Parks and Rec. Oh, yeah. Well, but Happy Endings. Is- <laughs> you know what? But we should still circle. I have this crazy idea that even if you don't believe exactly what I believe, you should still have a right to vote. And that crazy what? idea... It's called America, Mike. Okay, George uh, Washington. It's not called it anymore. Cassie? Um, two vote Cassie? Two votes? I'm giving you... Uh, I, I, it would be She's going to vote for both of them and apologize for each. <laughs> as, as the host, it would be improper to use my two vote on the final vote. I can't do that. That's mm. craziness. So I'm giving my second vote to... Uh, the other host in the room. And of winking. The superhero show show. And winking. Wait, so if I give a vote to both of them, what happens? 
We're, we're, they, we, we you just cannot. stand here. We just stand then here we, and it never ends. Then I give, then we go around the horn and give everybody two <laughs> votes. I don't fucking know, man. All right. Well, for me, this, it might be an upset, but the Parks and Rec last season just did me so dirty. It hurts to like taint it in that way. So it's going to be happy endings. Happy endings! Oh, wow. wow. Cinderella wow. story. Hail Mary at the last <laughs> second. That is a happy ending. Wow. Oh, Sports. Take me home tonight. <laughs> Yeah, I goal. preferred Pangea. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in the basket. Your 2011 to 2020 comedy of the decade is Happy Ending. Does that make sense? Mike, honestly, look me in the eyes. Does, doesn't that make sense? It makes, because it's if we're defining like best and usest, the world owns Parks and Rec. We are not right. unique for loving Parks and Recreation. No. That's why I thought we are, CXG was going to win. Right, but happy but endings I, takes it down. See, she sounds we like a great five anime. Of, <laughs> I know. We are I five like, of the eleven CXG people in the world who like happy girlfriend. endings. Got it. <laughs> that has been the show. Uh, what other shows can you listen to, Caitlin? Wow, you can listen to a lot of great shows, including some f- like. Body uh, wants to <laughs> the world. Okay. Superhero show show. I'm, I'm mostly. They've heard about that. Your actually. I was mostly just saying. Tell us about Unnatural Twenty. Oh, okay. I can do that. Uh, you, should, <laughs> Cassie, and I are on a different show. <laughs> um, they made that song about me. Uh, Cassie and I are on a different show with our friend Books, who is not here today, but did include a really Rest good show. Yeah, R.I.P. Books. Um, you can see her live and ready on our show, Unnatural 20s, where we leave the fate of each episode up to the rolls of a D20. It's a lot of fun. We talk about shit stuff. Shit and stuff. <laughs> yeah, Taylor, stuff. is there anything you want to plug? Um, I don't know. I've I've been drinking a lot of root beer and looking at birds. You guys, you got you you got to be looking at birds. Yeah. they're so majestic, so beautiful. Taylor, I've seen two birds before, and I think they look the same. Is that true? Well, listen, if, if they're the same species, they can look pretty similar, but there's little differences. It's actually sometimes hard to differentiate between species if uh, you know one's a juvenile. Oh my god! I tried to set him up for like a slam dunk awesome thing, but but he made it more boring. Birds, what's, what's, really? Birds? Yeah. What's the best bird? I okay. I go back and forth on this. There Best is, bird is an ostrich. No, there's a absolutely there's a, 100%. there's a fantastic family of a uh, black crowned night herons that live in the park near me, and I fucking love those little goobers. <laughs> they just look so so fun. They're you know what bird sucks? Blue jays. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Is, oh, that's a grumpy bird. You know what? They're it, jerks. They they really are. They're kind of jerks. They're they're a little moody. Yeah, they're peacock, a little moody. This has Peacocks been bird watch of pop filter. <laughs> of the last decade uh we still got tv dramas we still got mixtape we got so many things celebrating 10 years plus one of your pop filter fun keep out listening until until those keep watching those tv comedies (laughs) 